Hello everyone, the Green Scorpion here, presenting something a little different. So far, all my lists have been positive, the best of the best. So I thought, why not do something negative for once? If there is one thing I can't stand about some video games, it's bocce controls. Video games are supposed to make you feel like you are in control and that you have the skills to press forward. When a video game fails to do that, then the developers have failed at the most basic of programming. So for this list, I will be counting down the top 10 most poorly controlled games. As usual, only games I've played, and only one per franchise. Alright, let's get this over with. Let's start with the newest generation of video games. I recently picked up Kid Icarus Uprising and I absolutely loved it. The music, the graphics, the gameplay, the story, mostly everything in this game works. Except for the controls. Kid Icarus Uprising's controls are just abominable. The rail shooting sections aren't too bad. You move around and dodge with the analog stick, aim with the stylus, and shoot with the L button. Pretty basic. The land battles, however, is where the frustration really begins. You move Pit with the analog stick as usual, but he moves in a strafing motion. You literally have to change his view by sliding the stylus on the touchscreen. Now it may not sound so bad, but be warned, playing Kid Icarus Uprising may cause hand cramps and lead to carpal tunnel. Seriously, the controls are really punishing in this game. You also have the option to aim using the A, B, X, and Y buttons, but even that control scheme comes with its fair share of problems. Don't get me wrong, I do think that Kid Icarus Uprising is worth the investment but the controls are a huge blemish on an otherwise flawless game. One thing I like to do is find games that would be considered underrated. One game I held dear during the GameCube time was Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. This game was so successful that this video game spin-off had other spin-offs to follow it. Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles The Crystal Bearers is one of them. It really disappointed me. There are plenty of bad elements in this game, and controls are one of them. Not necessarily the movement, that works fine. It's the combat where the problems come in. The main character, Lael, has the power of telekinesis, so you use the Wii Remote to point on something you want to move and swing the Wii Remote to fling it or to carry it around. You can use anything in the environment as a projectile and you can even toss enemies around. The concept is good, but the controls were oftentimes uncooperative and clunky. The combat system itself doesn't provide you with a lot of options, it feels unfinished. That being said, the game got boring pretty quickly. As a whole, the Crystal Bearers had potential, and if the developers took the time to iron out the kinks, this game would have been much better. One of my favorite series is definitely Dead Rising. I like zombies pretty much in any medium, and it feels good to mow down tons of zombies with practically anything you can get your hands on. The first game was great, but its controls left something to be desired. No, not that one. I'm talking about the Wii version. The controls for the Wii version only served to improve the third person shooting formula where you could shoot anywhere on the screen. Everything else, on the other hand, suffered as a result. You couldn't perform Frank's signature wrestling moves as he did in the Xbox or PS3 versions, which were invaluable in the massive horde of zombies. Also, the combat system doesn't feel as satisfying since Frank controls very stiffly. This made boss battles pretty annoying and very unsatisfying. In short, Dead Rising on the Wii is at least playable, but its controls were a huge letdown considering how well the controls were on the Xbox and PS3. If you're going to play this game, I'd stick with those entries. Huh? Hey! Where's my camera? Mortal Kombat is an awesome franchise, from the bloody combat to the gory fatalities. Most of the Mortal Kombat games have had smooth controls in their 2D and even 3D entries, with the exception of one, Mortal Kombat Armageddon. Now don't get me wrong, Mortal Kombat Armageddon isn't terrible, but I just can't get over its controls. You move with the analog stick and attack with the buttons, as usual. Special moves, on the other hand, were actually performed using the Wii Motion. Why push a button when you can shake a stick? It's hard to explain, but it doesn't feel gratifying or smooth to swing the Wii Remote side to side to thrust forward Scorpion's Spear. 
it leads to some unresponsive controls and sometimes you'll perform a move you didn't want to. Even the controls for basic combat weren't as smooth as the earlier entries. These last three games show that if the Wii is going to do motion controls, it needs to be done right. As I said in one of my earlier countdowns, the Sonic franchise has been my childhood and it holds a nostalgic place to me. It's one of my all-time favorite franchises, and I could say something good about practically every game, even for some of the weaker entries like Sonic Heroes and Sonic Riders. However, there is one game that I didn't even finish. Sonic the Hedgehog 2006. I could go on for a while why this game is terrible, but I'll stick with the controls. All of the characters in this game have horrendous controls. Their movements feel very stiff and unorthodox, and the running sections were a mess of pitfall deaths as a result. Also, Sonic's speed feels really messy in this game. It's kinda hard to explain this, so I'll show you. Look how smoothly Sonic runs in Sonic Colors. Now look at 2006. Not only does it feel clumsy, but it looks clumsy as well. Many gamers say that Sonic 2006 is one of the worst games ever. I inevitably agree, and the controls are a major reason why. In all honesty, the Tomb Raider series is something that hasn't really appealed to me. That's not to say that the games are bad, it's just not my thing. There is one game, however, where the controls just made me quit in a matter of minutes. Tomb Raider The Last Revelation. The controls in this game are weird to say the least. Unlike in games like Super Mario 64 or Donkey Kong 64, you can't really move freely in this game. You have to move your view from left to right and then press forward to go in that direction. Considering the style of the Tomb Raider franchise, that isn't a good control scheme at all. It made jumping from one place to another more difficult than it should be and it was a constant stream of deaths. Performing jumping tricks also felt clunky and it would have been fine had the controls let you move freely like in any other standard platformer. As I said, I never cared for the Tomb Raider series, and I won't deny that the terrible controls in this game had something to do with that. Just to let you guys know, these next three games on the list, I literally went out of my way to play them just to include them. Aquaman Battle for Atlantis. This game is just garbage, and the controls played a huge part in that. Swimming around this excuse for Atlantis feels very clumsy and awkward, and that is the reason why facing enemies to attack them turned out to be a real chore. Also, I'd like to know if someone actually tested this game, because the different combo strings that are available in this game are so needlessly complicated and unnecessary. The camera control is probably the worst. It appears that the right stick is used as a make you want to vomit function. Precisely. Seriously guys, if you're going to make a good superhero action game, Batman is a good influence for that. One of my favorite genres in gaming is the fighting genre. The pure satisfaction of beating the crap out of someone else is just pure joy. One fighting game that didn't give me that satisfaction was Shaq Fu. Good God this is a horrible game! Aside from the fact that this game has Shaquille O'Neal attempting to beat up some red monster guy, this game's controls are just putrid. All of the fighters in this game control incredibly stiff and the physics of this game make landing a simple jump kick harder than passing the last level of Ikaruga. Okay, maybe it isn't that hard. Still, nothing about this game's controls work. And combined with an overly precise hit detection, you'd be better off dealing with Shaq's horrific rapping than put yourself through this torture. Ah! No! Wait! I take it back! I take it back! Turn it off! Turn it off! Ugh, <sighs> thank you. If you thought that Tomb Raider's controls didn't work, then you haven't seen the worst of it. Bubsy 3D in Furbitten Planet. Ugh. Bad puns aside, I got so sick of this game that I didn't even get past the first level. The controls are like Tomb Raider where you have to move your trajectory from left to right and then move forward. Even moving forward was a mess of uncooperative controls. Now think about it. Something as simple as walking is a huge chore in this game. That's sad. Also, when you jump, 
The camera pans down to supposedly help you see where you land, but it only serves to give players a huge migraine. Here's the thing. The control scheme that is implemented in this game and Tomb Raider can work for some games, but not for platformers. That being said, it wouldn't be so bad if Bubsy didn't constantly shove in your face the fact that this is, quite clearly, a platformer. Now, what would a platform game be without platforms? SHUT UP, Bubsy! <laughs> Ugh, finally, we're near the end. But before we get there, let's do the old recap. Number 10, Kid Icarus Uprising. Number 9, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles The Crystal Bears. Number 8, Dead Rising Chop Till You Drop. Number 7, Mortal Kombat Armageddon. Number 6, Sonic the Hedgehog 2006. Number 5, Tomb Raider The Last Revelation. Number 4, Aquaman Battle for Atlantis. Number 3, Shaq Fu. And number 2, Bubsy 3D in Fur Bitten Planet. Okay, seriously guys, I'll be hard pressed to find anyone who didn't see this coming. Oh god! Superman 64 has been claimed by many to be the worst game ever made, and now I'm claiming it the game with the absolute worst controls of all time. First of all, the movement controls on the ground feel incredibly stiff and awkward and the controls for flying are even more horrendous. It's difficult to precisely direct where you want to fly, which is required to accomplish those damn ring challenges. Attacking is also a pain. All he has is this clumsy one-two punch which requires close combat, while the enemies have guns that practically hit you every time. Going off topic for a second, doesn't anyone else find it strange that the Man of Steel, mind you, can be taken down with a few shots from a gun? This game also limits Superman of his powers, and even executing the powers comes complete with serious control problems. Nothing in this game works in terms of controls. Or anything at all for that matter. What's worse is that the source of the problems in this game wasn't Titus, but rather Warner Brothers and DC Comics, the holders of the Superman license. The fact that the license holders put so many restrictions in this game ultimately resulted in disaster, and gives us the number one most poorly controlled game of all time. I am the Green Scorpion, and COPYRIGHT LAWS SUCK!